So let's talk about the general process first. What we need is a state variable that stores the number of parts in the system uh, over the simulation run. So we need um, to increment this state variable whenever a part arrives into the, into the system from either of the sources and then decrement it when uh, an entity leaves the system. And this guarantees that we have a state variable that stores the number of parts in the system at any given time during the simulation run. And since this um, state variable is an attribute of the model, we need to go to model and then definitions and define a model state. And I'm going to define an integer uh, state and call it num in sys which has an initial value of 0 and then I will go back to my model and what I'd like to do is to increment uh, the value of num in sys whenever a part arrives uh, at either of the source objects. So I'm going to select my source 1, go to uh, state assignment step and before exiting I'm going to add an assignment and what I would like to assign is uh, num in sys, let me copy this, I would like to increment it by 1. And I'm going to do the same thing for my second source. So again, I'm going to select my second source, go to state assignments, before exiting, I'm going to increment number in system, or num in sys. And I also need to decrement it whenever an entity leaves the system. So I'm going to select my sync, go to state assignments and add the state assignment step num in sys will be num in sys minus one. So this guarantees that at any point during the simulation run my model state that I called num in sys has the value of the total number in system in it. So the last thing that we need to do is define a state statistic and tell Simio to track the value of num in sys. So I'm going to select my model, go to definitions, elements, and define uh, a state statistic. And I'm going to call it number in system, NIS. And I need to tell Simio uh, which state variable this uh, state statistic tracks. And in this case, it tracks num in sys, the state variable that we, uh, we just defined. So now if I go back to my model and run the model in fast forward mode, and there we go, it's uh, finished, and go to results, you will see that my state statistic appears in my pivot grid. And I can see the average value of uh, the number and system in, in, the, uh, in my pivot grid. Now note that Simio reports a number and system per part type. So for part one, I have an average number and system of 15.05. For part two, I have an average number and system of, of uh, 15.9. However, since we were interested in the overall number and system, we needed this user-defined statistic to get the average number and system uh, overall part types. So the second performance metric is the average time that an entity spends in, uh, in a particular subsystem of our model and specifically from the time that it arrives at station B until it leaves station D and, and exits the system. And note that I have changed the wording a little bit so that uh, the, the performance metric is uh, clearly described here. So I'm not interested in the time that the entity leaves station D and goes back to B, but uh, what I'm interested in is the time that the entity leaves station D through this link and actually exits uh, the system. So we're going to see how we can use uh, a tally statistic to collect uh, data about this particular um, output. So let's go to our model and uh, talk about how we can 
or what we need to to collect this um, information. So essentially, what uh, the general process is to mark the time uh, when the entity arrives at station B, and then uh, mark the time when the entity leaves station D through this link, and then just tally observations from the difference between the two uh, for each model entity. And then we, we can simply use an arithmetic average uh, to find um, the average value. So in order to do this, since the arrival time at station B is different for each entity, what, we, what we're dealing here uh, with is really a, a model entity state variable. So I'm going to go to my model entity definitions and then states and this time I'm going to define a real state uh, for my model entity and I'm going to call it uh, arrival at B. So now every entity has this attribute associated with it when it is created. So now I go back to my model and this time I'm going to use add-on processes to make my assignments. So I'm going to select the input node of my station B and then go to add-on process triggers uh, and on entered when the entity uh, is about to enter this node, I am going to make an assignment. And the assignment that I would like to do is a model entity arrival at B and I would like to mark time now which is the current simulation time. So now whenever the entity enters station B um, I assign the current simulation time to its arrival time at, a, uh, at B uh, variable. The next thing that we need is to uh, find out when the entity leaves station D and exits the system and then tally the difference between uh, the time that it arrived at station B and the time that it left the system. And in order to do this, I'm going to, since I'm using uh, connectors here, entities will be transferred from station D to the sink in zero simulation time. So I can simply do my um, tally step in the input uh, node of my sync object. So I'm going to use an add-on process trigger again. So when the entity enters the sync object, I am going to make an assignment and this time I'm going to uh, I'm sorry this time I'm not going to make an assignment but I'm going to do a tally step and what I would like to tally is that is the current simulation time when the entity arrives at input of, of the sink minus the time that it arrived at uh, station B but I haven't defined my tally statistic yet, so I need to uh, go to my model definitions elements and define a new tally statistic that I would like to call time between B and D. And you can also specify the unit type, which is going to be time. And now I can go back to my process and tell Simio that I would like to track or a tally uh, the current simulation time time now minus model entity uh, dot arrival arrival at B and it seems like I have an error so let's see time now let's do this again one more time using the expression builder this time so I'm going to have um, time now minus uh, model entity uh, arrival at B. Say OK. Now the error is fixed. So my, what my observation is at, uh, at this tally step is the current simulation time at which the entity is leaving the system minus the time that the entity arrived at station B. So for each entity I am getting an observation of the time between stations B and D. And I can also uh, set the unit to hours or uh, minutes or whatever uh, unit that I would, um, I would like.
So now I can go back to my facility view and uh, run the model in fast forward mode. And now if I go to my results, I have another user defined statistic here that is basically my time between stations B and D. But when I look at this value, it seems to be very long. It seems to be too high, six hours between uh, the two stations. This, is, this, is, this seems to be incorrect. So there seems to be a problem. And when you really think about this is that we are uh, tallying this value time now minus the arrival time at B which has an initial value of zero for all of the entities even those that do not go through station B at all so what I need is a decide step here and I want to make sure that I only do this tally for entities that actually go through station B and D so in order uh, and I can identify these entities by just checking whether the their arrival time at station B is not the default value of zero. So it has to have a value of greater than zero, whatever that is. So I'm going to have, uh, again, let me use the expression builder. So model entity uh, arrival at B greater than zero. And I know that this will guarantee that I'm, I'm doing my tally step only for those entities that actually go through station B and D. So now when I um, run my model in the fast forward mode again and go to my results, now we can see that my uh, value has dropped down um, significantly to uh, 0.03 hours, which seems to be a reasonable uh, uh, value for the time that entities spent between the two stations.